So in this video, we're going to start talking about current electricity. Uh, we're going to look at what is required for circuits, and then look at the difference between voltage and current. So first, circuits. Circuits consist of some sort of charge pump, and so that can either be a battery or a generator. And this also depends on AC versus DC. So let's talk about um, what each of those are. Um, first, there has to be a complete loop. So there has to be some sort of source for this energy, and it has to have a complete loop. DC, which stands for direct current, so direct current circuits, mean that there is a pump of electrons. So in a battery, there's two different chemicals, and one chemical supplies electrons, the other one pulls the electrons. And so what happens is, let's say we have a battery here, um, the electrons flow from one side of the battery to the other. And so in the circuit that is created, the electrons are actually flowing. So you're supplying electrons in DC, and it's going one direction. Direct means it has a direction to it. AC circuits, on the other hand, stand for alternating circuit. So alternating current circuit, alternating current. This one, you supply energy. So you supply energy. And what it does is it takes the electrons that are already in the wire and causes them to vibrate back and forth. Hence, alternating. You alternate directions. You go back and forth, back and forth. And so this is what your wall outlets are, um, your light fixtures, everything like that runs off of this AC. So alternating current. So the difference between voltage and current, the best way to describe it is a water analogy. So voltage is like the water pressure in the system. So it provides the push of water through a hose. So water pressure is what pushes water through a hose. The same thing happens with voltage. Voltage provides the push of energy for AC and electrons for DC through the wire. So the greater the voltage, the greater the push is. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have a bunch of flow. It depends on how much water is in the system. The pressure versus the amount of water are different. Now, the flowing is current, which makes sense. If you think about like a river current, it's how fast the water is moving. And so current is the flow. So in the water analogy, the flow of water through the hose is current, just like the flow of energy or the flow of electrons are through a wire. So voltage is the pressure. It's the push to actually have something happen. Current is the flow. So how many electrons are going through, how much energy is going through. This is why current can kill you, voltage can't. Voltage is just the push. It's the actual flowing of electrons or the flowing of energy through your body that can kill you. So some typical voltages. Um, these you probably want to know just because we're going to use them so much. Um, cylindrical batteries, so cylindrical batteries are like AAA, AA, C, and D batteries. Those are ones that look like cylinders. Those have a voltage of 1.5 volts. That's why you cannot get shocked off of them. There's not a lot of push. The wall outlets are 120 volts. And notice here I tell you the difference. Um, batteries are direct current, so this is a one direction push, whereas the outlets in the wall is pushing back and forth, so alternating current. In other countries, there's different voltages. Um, Japan is 110 volts. Europe, uh, most of Europe is 240 volts. So again, it depends on the country, that's why I put US. So in the US, we have 120 volts of voltage coming from the, out the wall outlets. So electric current, here's our equation for current. So current is I. I don't know why. Again, there's 26 letters in the alphabet, so we just use letters that we're not using. So I is current, and Q 
is charge, T is for time. So current is how much charge is going through every second. The unit is in amps or amperes, and that's denoted by A. So the amount of charge per unit time is measured in amps. We measure this using an ammeter, and we're actually going to learn how to use an ammeter, voltmeter, and ohmmeter in this class. So just realize current, since it's measured in amps, uses an ammeter. And so just kind of giving you an idea of what this means, if a wire carries a current of 10 amps, which is huge, so a 10 amp current, that means there's 10 coulombs of charge that pass through that wire, that spot of wire, every second. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but here it is in terms of electrons. That's 6.25 times 10 to the 19th electrons per second. So for DC, this is how many electrons would be pushed through every second for 10 amps. This is why current can kill you. If you can imagine that much energy from that many electrons going through your body every second, that would hurt. All right, so let's do an example using our new equation here. So in example one, we have the current in a light bulb is this many amps. So let's underline this number. Amps measures current, which is capital I. How much charge passes through a point in five seconds? So we're looking for how much charge goes through a specific spot in the bulb, and this is our time of five seconds. We're looking for charge, and charge is Q. So we have I, Q, and T, our new equation. I equals Q over T. I is 0.835. We're looking for Q, and T is 5 seconds. So we're going to multiply both sides by 5. Cancel that over here. And we get a charge of 4.175 coulombs. So charge is measured in coulombs. In our second example, we have current of 5 milliamps. So this is our current, so this is I. How long would it take for 2 coulombs of charge, so that's Q, to pass through a point in this wire. So how long does it take would be time. Now first of all, notice this is in milliamps. So we're going to have to King Henry. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. If you want to stair step or do um, factor label, go for it. Whatever works for you. So milli is here, and we're going to amps, which is our base. So we're going one, two, three to the left. So we go one, two, three to the left. So our I is 0 0.005 amps. All right, Q is two coulombs, and time is what we're looking for. All right, so here we go. I equals Q over T. So 0 0.005 is I. Q is 2, and we're looking for T. So here's where you're solving for that denominator. So use whatever method works for you, whether it's the proportion, whether it's the algebraic, uh, the shortcut, the inverse, whatever works, go for it. Okay. Notice since this is also a standard, um, a standard fraction equation, you can also triangle it. So Q, I, and T. I'm going to do the algebraic method. That's what works best for me. So multiply by t on both sides. Cancels out. So we have 0 0.005t equals 2. And then divide by 0 0.005. The idea is you want to get rid of the fraction first. So whatever you do, get rid of the fraction first. And so 2 divided by 0 0.005 gives us 400. And here time is measured in seconds. So 400 seconds.
And so now let's talk about what these different amp measurements actually mean in terms of um, you. So if you were to have this much current come, go through your body, what would it feel like? So 0 0.001 amps can be felt. So 0 0.001 is one milliamp. So you can feel one milliamp. Five milliamps, which is what our last problem had in it, can be painful. So that's where um, if you've ever had a shock, it's probably around five milliamps, where if it just hurts. Um, if anyone's ever messed with outlets and you've ever had like those shakes, um, the shakes are involuntary muscle contraction. And so that can be 10 milliamps. Loss of muscle control, that's going to be like tasers. Um, tasers are somewhere around this 15 milliamp mark. And then, of course, um, very small amperage, I mean super small, 70 milliamps is what can be fatal. So 70 milliamps across your heart can kill you. So again, not very big currents here. And so you think about like 20 amps or a 50 amp, anything like that, I mean that's a lot. That can definitely kill you. So very, very little current can actually do harm.